let's go ahead and uh, verify Stokes' theorem. For the hemisphere, each hemisphere, so that'll be the surface. Um, S will be described this way, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 9, and z is greater than or equal to 0, um, and the bounding circle. So we're just trying to give away for sure right now so we don't run into other trouble that the boundary is going to be a circle, which we'll call C. It will be x squared plus y squared is equal to 9, and z is equal to 0. Yeah, so it's a circle of radius 3 in the xy plane. And included in all of this is we see in Stokes' theorem there's a vector field, so we better provide a vector field for the vector field. F, capital F arrow, of x comma y comma z is equal to angle bracket y comma negative x comma zero. All right, so um, instead of parameterizing s using spherical coordinates, Now, we could do that. It's just the thing is we only have a hemisphere, right? Since we have a hemisphere and not the whole sphere, it's probably just a little more convenient for us to parameterize in the following way and just say that S is the graph of a function g of x comma y equals root. 9 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, with parameter domain. Well, the filled in circle. Um, so the parameter domain, capital D, being the following. So in the xy plane, it's the filled in circle, also called a disk of radius 3. Yeah, so we've got this filled in circle there radius 3. Now, let's um, orient. We got that much sort of basically covered. Let's orient the sphere upward. Let's just choose that. Let's, let's orient this sphere, capital S, um, upward, or we could use the word outward. All of this is very uh, the cho choice of a word like this is rather everyday language, but it needs to be. It just actually has to work with and describe pictorially what's going on. So um, at the point the point x comma y comma z, um, here's what we really want to have happen is at a certain point on the sphere, um, let's draw sort of a an attempted quick picture of this x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. So there's the equatorial um, circle there and that, that cap on top. So at each point, like right there, you know, if that's a typical x comma y comma z on the sphere, we actually would like the, um, we would like the arrow to point outward just because the choice was either inward or outward and let's just let's just choose outward and the thing is that vector the direction of that vector let me just sort of start from the origin and draw dot 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 it's really just the the if you start at the origin and you go in through that point and then you continue that's the direction we want actually yeah that's how you're going to get something that's normal to the surface or perpendicular to the surface. So in the end, what we actually really want is we want the direction um, to be uh, x comma y comma z like this. Yeah, but the, the, the problem is that for this vector, the magnitude is incorrect. But the magnitude is incorrect. Um, why is the magnitude incorrect? Because if you have a point, x comma y comma z, on a sphere of radius 3, then this vector here would have magnitude 3. 
right? So the magnitude is incorrect being 3, so we can fix that by dividing by 3 or multiplying by a third. So our, our orientation of the sphere that we want is actually going to be 1 third times the vector x comma y comma z. Now, for based on the orientation that we have here, if uh, for, for, for capital C, the, the bounding circle to be compatible, um, take, take a look. Uh, if you take like this arrow that's shown in red here, and you have that, you know, at the bottom, there was that suction cup that is oriented this way. So all of these, you know, circle, I'm not drawing in the red arrow each time, but you see from as this just barely touches the equatorial circle here that the boundary of this circle this way needs to go, needs to travel in this direction. So I guess from a bird's eye view, from where the positive z-axis is, this would be the circle in counterclockwise orientation. So starting from the positive x-axis, uh, the next point that that's of the circle that's on an axis is the positive y-axis. So we'll parameterize this um, by r of t is equal to okay radius three circle. That's really counterclockwise in three-dimensional space. So three cosine of t comma three sine of t comma zero for t going between zero and two pi. Let's just comment for a, for a moment. Um, just make the remark that alternately, if we had oriented the sphere the other way, so if we had oriented inward, that is if n happened to be the vector negative one third times vector x comma y comma z, then a compatible um, orientation for the circle would need to go in the other direction. And we could do that, for instance, by flipping the y coordinate and having 3 cosine of t comma negative 3 sine of t comma 0. But we're not going to actually, we're not going to do this here, right? So let's just, let's just kind of kindly cross that. Like this is true, but it's just a comment. I, I'm sort of lightly crossing out so that we don't accidentally do that. Now, let's go ahead and set up, based on what we have here, the left side of Stokes' theorem. So we're really actually looking at this right here, the line integral over C of f dot dr. Okay, And um, this is, well, this is going to be the integral from t going from 0 to 2 pi of, well, we need um, f of r of t. So this will be 3 uh, sine of t. Three sine of t. Okay, wait. Why three sine of t? Let's go back and recall from way back up here in the question. Let's in fact let's make a copy of this down here. That our vector field was in fact. Let's see where can we paste this. How about just below for a moment. So the y. Uh, so we need f of r of t. So y gets replaced with three sine of t. Then we have negative x. So we have negative three cosine of t. And then we have zero. Okay. So this. Uh, well, let's not erase that. So right here, what we have is this is f of r of t. And then we need to dot that with r prime of t. So let's stare at this and then take a derivative. So I'll have um, angle bracket negative 3 sine of t, comma 3 cosine of t, comma 0, uh, dt. So this part right there, this is r prime of t. And we will not go through all the computation here. You ought to just go through it. It's not too much work. Uh, and in the end, you will get for this negative 18 pi. And then we'll come back to this number, negative 18 pi, in just a moment. Now let's start doing the computation that we need for the right side. Well, for the right side, there is a ds, for instance. So to compute that, ds is uh, since our surface, we decided to go with the graph of a function called lowercase g is given by root 1 plus partial derivative of g with respect to x quantity squared plus partial derivative of g with respect to y quantity squared dA. Now this is, if we go back and just scroll up to get what g was from over here as a reminder, not a p 
pieces. So let's just paste this down here for reference, really. Um, we're going to have root, well, the 1 plus, and then if we differentiate that with respect to x due to chain rule, we're going to have um, x over root 9 minus x squared minus y squared quantity squared plus similarly y over root 9 minus x squared minus y squared quantity squared dA. And then um, cleaning up some of the algebra here, we will end up with 1 plus uh, the fraction x squared plus y squared over z squared is, is a, well, at least for now, a shortcut way of writing this dA, which will equal root um, 9 over z squared dA, which will be 3 over z dA. Of course, our z is just a shortcut for writing this for right now. Okay, so then the right side of Stokes' theorem, yeah, the, the one that looks like this up here, well, we're going to um, write this is double integral over the surface of curl of the vector field f dot uh, d s. This is the book's way of writing it. I think our preferred way of writing it is actually just to have the inter double integral over the surface of the curl of f dotted with the orientation n, d, and then a scalar s. And this will end up being double integral over s of. Um, if we take the, the vector field that's right here, and if you compute the curl, um, you should end up with 0 comma 0 comma negative 2. Okay, then copy the dot, so that dot is this dot. Now we need the normal vector. We, uh, scrolling back, had that back here. Let's just go ahead and write that one third inside. So we'll have um, one third x comma one third y comma one third z. I'll just write those x over 3, y over 3, z over 3. And then ds, well what about ds? ds, as we see from our computation, is going to be 3 over z dA. Yeah, so this is our current way of writing ds. We do need to eventually get rid of having z's. Um, but in the end, uh, this will actually turn into uh, double, let's see, oh, I see, because there's an A here. We should switch to parameter domain, uh, capital D. So this ends up being the double integral over D of negative, so 0 times that, gone, then 0 times y over 3, gone. So we end up with um, negative 2 times z over 3, but then that's times 3 over z, so the 3 over z and the z over 3 cancel to a 1, and so we're really just left with the integral of negative 2 dA, and if we write out, um, if we look at the parameter domain d, we've still got a representation of that over here, copy paste this down here, actually the most convenient way to, uh, so there's a picture of d, um, because it's a filled-in circle of radius 3, the most convenient way to do this is to actually convert this into, um, so copy the negative 2, but instead of dA being dx dy or dy dx, I think it most makes makes the most sense to do um, polar coordinates, r, dr, d theta, and um, r will go from 0 to 3, theta will go from 0 to 2 pi. This is actually a fairly nice integral to do, and if you go through all the parts here, you'll get 18 pi. That is good because it matches the 18 pi we computed there. So this negative 18 pi is com is the left side of Stokes' theorem, and then um, and then this negative 18 pi is the right side of Stokes' theorem. Now this is a little perhaps much for an interactive question, but I'd like to do the following. So we just had this um, orientation that we had right here. And what I'd like to actually ask you to do for the interactive question is really this, is verify that the orientation works. Verify this, uh, verify that, uh, just in the short form, verify orientation by checking a point. So this is going to probably require drawing a picture. What I mean is check that the n of x comma y comma z is equal to uh, x over 3 comma y over 3 comma z over 3 works 
by picking a specific point, picking a specific point, uh, x comma y comma z on the sphere S, and and you know drawing a picture, make sure everything really works, and drawing to verify to verify that n points outwards, because we had asked n to point outwards. <laughs>